The 1980s were the decade when some of the most iconic video game series were born. For RPGs, it was no different. I have to cast my net wide for this entry, simply because the number of series spawned in this era is staggering. You have Ultima, Wizardry, Might and Magic, Gauntlet, Fantasy Star, Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy, and the Gold Box RPGs. Every one of these series saw their first entry during this time period. The decade was also when RPGs began to mature as a genre. RPGs in this time period were no longer experiments. They weren't just college students' hobby projects. Instead, they crafted unique identities and started to push the limits of the medium in storytelling, immersion, and strategy. Nineteen eighty-one saw the first entries in two of the most iconic classic RPG series, Ultima and Wizardry. Ultima utilized many of the same mechanics and characters as its predecessor, 1980's Calabeth. However, it also introduced an expansive, top-down, overworld area. No longer confined to a dungeon crawl, players now had the freedom to roam towns, various dungeons, collect multiple quests. It also introduced the first fleshed-out time travel plot in the history of video games, requiring the player to travel back in time to prevent an evil from invading the world, a plot device echoed in many later RPGs. 1981's Wizardry was the first home release to allow the player to control a party of multiple characters, and it was so notoriously difficult that it spawned two more firsts in gaming. The first strategy guide, called the Wizzy System, and the first commercial game trainers, cheating programs used to make the game easier. The game was heavily inspired by the Play-Doh classics, especially Oubliette, but it took the detail, depth, and polish to a previously unforeseen level. Both Wizardry and Ultima were critical and commercial hits. They spawned an almost innumerable number of sequels and set the stage for an arms race of increasingly polished RPG products. In 1982, digital RPGs went global and we start to see the earliest examples of Japanese RPGs. The first came from the company Koei, The Dragon and the Princess. This game introduced the first turn-based tactical battle system, which utilizes positioning as well as character abilities, which later spun off into the tactics RPG subgenre. It would be another few years before it became common practice to localize RPGs for overseas markets. Developing under unique cultural influences from shared sources of inspiration, two distinct genres of RPG would emerge, the Western-style CRPG and the Eastern console-based JRPG. In 1983, Ultima 3 Exodus was released, the first Ultima game to include a party of characters and the first stateside RPG to include this tactical combat. Ultima 3 set a new standard for quality and production values in RPGs. 1984's Black Onyx was one of the best-selling Japanese games at the time, an RPG released in Japan by Dutch developer Hank Rogers. The game is recognized for bringing Western-style RPG influence to Japan before Ultima, Wizardry, or even Dungeons & Dragons itself were exported to the market. 1985's A Bard's Tale, besides being a claimed RPG in its own right, was the first appearance of the Bard class in any digital RPG. It was also the first CRPG to implement a monster summoning mechanic, calling enemies to fight for your party, which has become an important element in many later RPGs. Gauntlet is known for pioneering the action RPG in an attempt to bring elements of the RPG genre into the arcade. Gauntlet was revolutionary in the arcade scene for being the first four-player cabinet, a strategy for increasing the earnings in a then-lagging arcade industry. It worked. Ultima 4, like many of the Ultima games, was a benchmark for RPGs. It was the first title that gave the player moral choices. It allowed roleplay and immersion beyond just quests and battles. The player did not build their character out of stats and abilities, but instead was prompted to answer a series of moral questions to determine what type of character they would play, and this theme of moral choice persisted throughout the entire game. The focus established here on player choice has become almost a necessity for any contemporary Western RPG. 1986 brought us Might and Magic Book 1, heavily inspired by the Wizardry series and praised for its scope and freedom, The Legend of Zelda, which pioneered action-adventure games by borrowing RPG-style gear collection and open-world exploration, and finally Dragon Quest, which set the standard for console RPGs in Japan. It is considered by many to be the first true JRPG. Enix raised the bar with the talent they brought in. Koichi Sugiyama, a celebrity composer, and Akira Toriyama of Dragon Ball fame for their character and monster designs. Dragon Quest established a top-down visual style with random encounters on a separate screen that became a standard for JRPGs. 
It also simplified gameplay to make RPGs more accessible on consoles and to a wider audience. Final Fantasy added more Western influences to the JRPG design, such as a class and party system and blending science fiction elements with fantasy. Squaresoft was on the edge of bankruptcy at the time it was developed, and a financial failure from this game would have put the company out of business, hence the name. The game was not only successful but considered a breakthrough in the genre and has spawned countless sequels and jokes about the definition of the word final. 1987's Fantasy Star was Sega's big break into the RPG genre and way ahead of its time. The game was praised for its 16-bit graphics and science fiction setting, but the game was also the first ever to advertise a female protagonist and had predefined, fleshed-out characters rather than just blank slate player avatars. Wizardry 4 was released the same year and was the first game with multiple endings. There were five total, and it was the first RPG where you would play a villain. 1988 brought us Pool of Radiance, the first gold box RPG, officially licensed Dungeons & Dragons games using the tabletop rule set. It also brought us Final Fantasy II, which was the first RPG in which your stats increased based on the actions you perform. Unfortunately, this meant that the player had to run from hundreds of battles to increase their agility, or get hit to increase their health, but at least it took risks in game design. It pioneered mechanics that were later refined upon by games such as the Elder Scrolls or the Grandia series. Ultima V, released in 1988, is pretty much the capstone release for the 80s. It was refined, detailed, brilliantly executed. The game added a never-before-seen day-night cycle to the series, in which NPCs sleep at night and wander around during the day, and it added a look command, giving in-game descriptions of locations and objects when used. But while all this was going on, the 16-bit era of consoles was picking up. The Sega Genesis without North America and the Super Famicom, the Japanese release of the Super Nintendo, was just around the corner. The complex CRPGs, deeply entrenched in their Dungeons & Dragons lineage, had a dedicated following, but the scene was shifting. It was attracting more casual players with more streamlined experiences as the 90s approached. 